Hi, Jags. This is Fahad. Today is Wednesday, uh, February 10th, I believe. Um, and uh, uh, we have a brand new presentation here for uh, the stock called MP Material, symbol MP. And once again, we have Chronicle to present this long thematic idea for Jaguar Media. Hi, Chronicle. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Um, I was looking forward to this one. I, I guess this is sort of like a, a follow up to uh, what was discussed in our conversation on Thursday last week. Yeah, I'm very excited about this. Now, just to be clear to everybody that uh, Jack clients have already bought into this position. We currently have open positions. I'm long the stock. I don't know about you, Chronicle. I'm assuming you're also long the stock already. Yep. Um, yeah, and 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 we presented briefly discussion about this in conversations last week, and so I think the clients are pretty familiar with the case. Uh, but the most important thing is that in this presentation we want to lay out some of the most critical underpinning of the price action here. I'm very positive on the outlook for the next year to two years. So why? What's the reason? We're going to talk about this in presentation. So with that said, let's get started. Tell me about it. So um, going to the next slide, the theme here is buy America, build America, dig America. So if we go back to our morning conversation on November 24th, uh, that was when we recommended a bull case for a Vanek uh, rare earth metals ETF. And as it turned out, that call uh, worked very nicely for us, which led us to provide an update last week uh, to take profits and basically rotate our capital into this company, MP Materials. Uh, mainly because we believe that the risk reward in the Asian companies in this REMX basket um, is no longer as attractive as it used to be, whereas the, the tailwinds for the Western Hemisphere and American players are just getting started. So going to the next slide, uh, we believe that MP Materials is currently the purest play on rare earth production uh, in North America. Uh, this company operates the, the infamous Mountain Pass mine, which was acquired in 2017 from Molycorp when they went bankrupt, uh, and they restarted the mine in 2018. Just to give a bit of history and background here, uh, Mountain Pass happens to be the only integrated refining, processing, and mining site for rare earths in North America. Not only that, um, the Bassness site ore that's found there actually has a greater than 8% average grade, which makes it one of the highest quality rare earth deposits globally. So this mine started production in 1952 for almost 40 years. Um, believe it or not, it was globally the largest producer of rare earths before China took over that leadership in 1990s. Um, during this time, ownership actually switched hands several times. In 1977, uh, Molybdenum Corp of America sold it to Unical, and then in 2005, Unical sold it to Chevron um, following a three-year suspension due to weak prices. And then in September 2008, um, that was when Molly Corp acquired, uh, acquired the mine from Chevron uh, before selling it to MP Materials in 2017. So if there's one thing we have to realize, this is without doubt a very cyclical boom and bust um, industry. Therefore, um, we have to time this properly, uh, but we do believe there are sec secular tailwinds this time around, and uh, we are in the early stages of rare earths uh, production upcycle. Now, in terms of where MP Materials is at in the present day, the company is currently producing roughly 15% of the global supply of rare earths. Um, however, much of that is still in the form of a concentrate um, which requires it to be sent uh, for further processing and separation in China. So it's not yet at the stage where they are fully self-sufficient, but um, because they still need to send ores to China. But um, this is all going to change soon enough because management is in the middle of a five-year transformation plan. Uh, right now, they're in phase two, uh, which represents the modernization and recommissioning of the existing on-site refining and separation facilities, uh, which is going to result in self-sufficiency um, to attract, to extract the individual min minerals um, without having to send these concentrates to China. And this project is expected to be complete by 2022. And then uh, America will finally have a self-sufficient producer and supplier of rare earths. Um, then after that, the company will proceed to phase three 
which is to expand downstream into the secondary production of alloys and permanent magnets uh, used in electric vehicle motors, relays, uh, smartphones, industrial turbines, and so on. So ultimately, this is going to result in more predictable cash flows, which will help the company avoid the pitfalls um, that Molly Corp succumb to. Yeah, this is an extremely important point here, and I want to just re-emphasize what Chronicle just said over here. You see, the thing is that dependence on China is so big for rare earth that uh, in the process of refining these uh, these alloys and the rare earth metals that come out of the ground uh, is is such a dirty work essentially, and uh, and it's so it's it affects the environment so significantly that the process to move from phase one to phase two is not going to be a turnkey solution this will take at least a year perhaps slightly even longer so that's why the dependence on china will continue at least for the year to two years which is precisely the number one reason why i'm so bullish on mp materials today because until then with improving economic backdrop we're going to see sustainable you know strength essentially in the rare earth pricing on the street the average selling prices and so that's why for the next 12 months in my view the the upside is going to be significant until that phase 2 is complete as illustrated in this slide and then more so in deep in, in depth in the actual research note that's going to be attached and provided on the website moving on to this slide in terms of a speculation, tell me about this. Sure. So uh, just just very quickly here, we, we want to make very clear that MP Materials is already fully operational in terms of mining and concentrate production. So this is not a 100% speculative play where the company is making zero revenue. That's not the case here. Like in the most recent earnings report for Q3, uh, the company disclosed 10.2 thousand metric tons of concentrate production at a cost of $1,389 per metric ton. And then they sold 9.4 thousand metric tons at a price of um, at an average price of $3,393 per metric ton. So as we shared in last week's conversation, this graph here um, shows that revenue is expected to triple, triple over the next couple of years. Um, note also that uh, Mountain Pass currently um, has just under 20 million tons of proven reserves. Uh, lastly, just wanted to mention that in terms of specific elements that um, MP Materials produces and their applications, that's all covered on pages two to three of the write-up. Yeah, take a look at this revenue growth projections from here from 2019 revenues were only about a hundred and uh, not even about 75 million 2020 um you know through third quarter it was already it had already uh doubled essentially practically 2021 we're expected to see about 175 million and then a sharp acceleration to 2022 rising to nearly 350 million and that's 100 percent growth rate essentially in each of the years for at least the next two to three years on the revenues and the free cash flow projections and you can see from the differential here between the cost and the average selling price as well 1300 100 roughly metric tons is the cost versus average realized selling price of $3,400 per metric ton. That's so the margins are here are significant for the company. Moving on to geopolitics, this is a second very important piece to understand why we are bullish on MP. So take it away from here, Chronicle. Sure. Uh, so about four months ago, the game changed for Mountain Pass because on October 1st, uh, President Trump uh, signed an executive order instructing his interior department to look into giving grants and monetary incentives for local rare earth producers. Uh, specifically, the order mentions, quote, undue reliance on critical minerals in processed or unprocessed form from foreign adversaries constitutes an unusual and extraordinary threat which has its source in substantial part of the United States to the national security, foreign policy, and economy of the United States." Unquote. Um, then a couple months later, Trump followed that up by signing a $2.3 trillion fiscal package. And not many people realize this, 
but this package also earmarks $800 million um, worth of rare earth industry programs. Now, separately, uh, President Biden has also moved, made his own moves in this regard. Uh, firstly, his Buy American Executive Order explicitly mentions investing in clean energy and critical supply chains, both of which are going to increase the, the consumption of rare earths. Then just last week, um, news emerged that Biden is now planning to issue a separate executive order uh, for the comprehensive review of critical supply chains. And according to a senior official, the Biden, um, Biden is going to um, ensure that the order, quote, recommends to develop proactive steps to close supply chain vulnerabil vulnerabilities, um, not only for government procurement, but to really look across the board at supply chains, including very much the private sector, unquote. And before we go to the next slide, last thing I want to mention um, is on page five of the write-up, um, I also talked about how Representative Lance Gooden and Senator Ted Cruz um, currently have bills that are in consideration for um, incentivizing the domestic production of rare earths. Yeah, very interesting point here. And this is why it's so important to emphasize the geopolitics about what is driving this price action in the stock. Um, you know, it's not just a high level uh, view that so much dependence is on China. It's that the U.S. policy has become all of a sudden much more aggressive and there's bipartisan support behind this from both Trump or previously from Trump and now from Biden. But I don't see that stopping. I think there is a sudden realization that, uh, which was kickstarted clearly by Trump, but it's a sudden realization on both sides that we got to get this thing done. We got to get our own rare earth production and consumption trends in the United States, just like we did long time ago in the United States with oil consumption after we started, you know, uh, started um, exploring the shale gas production many, many years ago. And that made the U.S. energy independent. And now same thing is happening with the rare earth. The third interesting point, which is mentioned in this slide, it has to do with Myanmar. Now, some of you folks may have seen that yesterday, yesterday being Tuesday, February 9th, um, we saw a all of a sudden sudden spike in stock intraday without any particular news. But I think looking back at that now and that momentum is continuing in the stock today, it may be related to what's happening in Myanmar. Now I'm going to let uh, uh, Chronicle explain to me exactly how to connect the dot between what's happening in Myanmar and what's happening and how it's driving the price section in MP materials. But in big picture, if I understand this correctly, Chronicle, basically the the dirty business of refining rare earth and the pollution and all that that it creates means that China basically sends a lot of these materials to Myanmar where it is processed and separated. And then from there, it is sold to the rest of the world. But Myanmar is basically... Uh, is going through a coup, a military coup right now where the government is overthrown. So there's a risk there of disruption. Am I right in thinking or is there more to add? Um, so th you're, you're correct there. Um, but to add a bit more background, so if we go back to December, um, that was when the Chinese government um, implemented a law um, in their own words to act against countries that abuse export controls in a way that harms China's interest and to take reciprocal measures against any country or region. So that was when the supply chain um, began to uh, get a little jittery. And it also specified that um, military and nuclear products, including rare earths, um, will, be subject, will be subject to um, export controls. Then fast forward to January, um, China followed up by publishing seven pages of draft legislation to reinforce the protection of nat national rare earth resources and to strengthen full chain, full industrial chain regulation. So from America's point of view, this was already a concern because um, as we can see from the chart here, China accounted for over 60% of uh, global rare earth production in 2019. But then now coming to this um, military coup that you just mentioned, I'm sure we've all seen the news. Um, as it turns out, Argus was out with a report last week saying that Myanmar 
accounts for more than 60% of China's iron absorption rate, rare earth um, concentrate intake. So therefore, um, any resulting shutdowns from the coup would, would likely result in lower production of uh, medium and heavy rare earths. So this could yet be another motivation uh, for the U.S. government to look into becoming more self-sufficient because any disruptions in su supply from Myanmar to China and back and forth um, is going to have a knock-on effect uh, for the U.S. Fantastic stuff, yeah. That adds uh, far more clarity than I had in my mind originally. So um, the in, in to sum it all up, you know, for the next 12 to 18 months, we are very bullish on this stock, uh, MP materials. Uh, prices are going up. Cash flows are rising sharply. Revenues are rising sharply. The production, the phase two, will not be completed until for at least another 12 months to 18 months um, in California, where this company has the facility. Um, and uh, also, uh, we have the military coup going on in Myanmar. And then there is significant support from from the, from Congress uh, to get something done about this. And MP is really the only pure play to trade this entire trend. So I could see stock just having a remarkable next 12 to 18 months, and that's essentially what it boils down to. Any last minute thoughts here that you want to add, Chronicle? Um, nope, you summed it up perfectly. Perfect. All right, great presentation as usual. I hope this provides more color to the bull case that we have already presented in the last two weeks. Folks, just a reminder that this entire video as well as the full research note write-up and the slide deck will be available for you to take a look at once it's published on Jaguar Media website. That's it from us. We'll see you next time.